Hello, and welcome to this special 200th episode of C++ Weekly. This is my Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's episode for December of 2019. Now, I have released over 200 videos on C++ Weekly. Some of them have been special edition episodes or Ask C++ Weekly kind of episodes. So it's been more than 200, but this has been now my 200th week of releasing a video, at least one video, every single week. And I am celebrating by making a class of sorts uh, out of the videos that I have recorded so far. So the basic idea is each week for the next five weeks, including this week, I will have a list of videos to watch, a general topic and flow, and for each video that I share with you, I will uh, put a link here on YouTube so that you can easily get to it. So I will introduce the topic. You will watch five or six videos about that topic, which are previous C++ weekly episodes. And then I will provide a set of questions, um, exercises, things for you to answer and to do on your own. And then in the following week, I will provide answers to those as well as introduce the next topic. Now, this entire thing is going to be about C++ lambdas. And if you have been watching any of my videos on C++ Weekly, you should be aware that I have released many videos that involve lambdas. And in fact, nearly every video probably has a lambda in it at some point or another. But the, that is the idea. We are going to use lambdas as a window to explore and understand more about C++. So in this first chapter of five, we are going to be learning the basics about lambdas, what they are, how they are implemented, and then I'm going to provide you with some exercises, as I said. So the first episode to watch is episode 152, Lambdas, the Keys to Understanding C++. So look up at the top corner here and expect to see a link to that video so you can go and watch it right now. And this is a basic introduction to why we are using lambdas in this class. And once you are done watching that video, come back here. The next episode to watch is 133. What exactly is a lambda anyhow? And in this episode, you will get an overview of how lambdas are implemented by the compiler and what that means in general for how we can interact with lambdas. And again, when you're done watching that episode, come back here. The next episode to watch is episode 37, Stateful Lambdas. In this episode, you're going to get a little bit more about the details of how sub-objects, captures, and lambdas work, and what their lifetime is, and that will give you an even deeper understanding about really what lambdas are and what they mean to the language. The next episode is episode 51, Advanced Stateful Lambdas. Now, in this episode, we do a little bit more goofy things with creating some sort of state in our capture and then returning that state back to the caller so that we can kind of interact with the lambda a little bit. And so go ahead and watch that episode now and then come back here. The fifth episode is episode 40, Inheriting from Lambdas. In this episode, you are going to understand more about the fact that lambdas are types and like any other type they can be used as a base class well any other type that's not declared final that is and we're not going to really talk about yet really why necessarily you want to inherit from lambdas but we'll lead into that in later episodes and the sixth and final episode to watch for this chapter is episode 97, Lambda to Function Pointer Conversions. 
So go ahead and watch that episode, and that's been six total. These are all relatively short episodes, but you're probably going to invest maybe uh, an hour and a half or so on this first chapter. And then come back here again, and we'll discuss the exercises and questions that you will work on for next week. Okay, so question number one. Come up with reasons for wanting lambda to function pointer conversions. And, you know, it's out of habit in this show that I use Compiler Explorer for everything because I can. Exercise number two. Ponder the practical applications of inheriting from lambdas. We're going to spend more time on that in next week's chapter, but go ahead and try to come up with some ideas for why you think that you'd want to do this. And then question number three, exercise number three, is I want you to take um, our stateful lambda that can generate the Fibonacci sequence that looks like this. And I want you to take this and implement it effectively in C++ 98. I want you to implement it without a lambda being available to you at all in the language. Now, Standard Exchange is a helpful library utility that was added in C++ 14, I believe. Could have been 11. Could have been 17. Might have to look that one up. It's not available in C++ 98 regardless. So you're going to need to understand what these captures mean, how to create a class that has these captures, the call operator, what mutable means to this, and then do the implementation here and provide something that looks and acts just like this simple lambda. So let's go ahead and test it real quick. So I'm just going to grab this lambda here. And to get standard exchange, I need, I believe, the utility header. Yes. And so if I call it once, I expect a zero to be returned. Let's go up here. And we haven't really looked at all at our compiler explorer window in a number of episodes. All right. So the first time it's called, I get one return, and I kind of skipped zero, I guess. So it kind of depends on how you uh, look at the Fibonacci sequence, where it starts exactly. So call it once, I get one. Call it twice, I get one. Okay, that's starting to look promising. Call it a third time, I should get two. That's one plus one is two. Call it a fourth time, I should get one plus two is three. And then again, I should get two plus three is five. So this is, in fact, doing exactly what we want it to do. So go ahead and do that. Implement this as if it were C++ 98 to help you gain a deeper understanding of what lambdas are and what the compiler is doing for you. So I hope you enjoyed this first chapter in my Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year 2019 class that I am putting together here for you on C++ Weekly. This is the first episode of five that we will be covering here. So um, I hope you subscribe and you stick around for the next four episodes to learn even more about this stuff and dig into the details.